I couldn't wait to do the video on Scorpio. I am so sick of the rumors. So here we are. I got y'all my fellow water sign. Hello everyone. Welcome to my next video for the ruling planet segment of my astrology series. And today's planet of focus is going to be Pluto. And I'm super excited to do Pluto because Pluto is the ruling planet of Scorpio. And I really, really want to dive into Scorpio as a sign because I'm really into debunking the myths and the stereotypes about the zodiac signs and I strongly believe that Scorpio is the second most misunderstood sign next to Gemini. It should be a short video, however, the more I dived into Pluto and Scorpio, the it's just never ending whenever I go into water signs. So bear with me, I'll try to make this as short as possible. Now let's get into Pluto. So one of the first things that I want you guys to understand about the planet of Pluto is that it both destroys and creates. These polarities lie within Scorpio and lie within their sister sign Taurus, which we'll get into later. But that is what's most important is to understand that it both destroys and creates. Pluto represents rebirth, death, sex, um, de annihilation, destruction. And I also wrote a few things down because I want to get this right. So I also wrote a few quotes from some books that I have because, yes, I do own astrology books. Um, Pluto's actions bring to light things hidden in the depths of your subconscious, releases your dormant forces, and causes your suppressed energies to erupt suddenly, kind of like a volcano or like earthquakes, which are actually representations of the planet of Pluto infecting our Earth. Um, I also mentioned the key word would be elimination because, you know, um, it's essentially wiping the, the slate clean. Whenever your life is going through a serious transformation or it feels like the world is being ripped under your feet, it's probably an influence from Pluto. So those who have gone through serious situations in their life where they had to be uprooted from their homes, maybe people who had to move to a foreign country out of nowhere because a close loved one passed away. That is also a big part of Scorpio. Um, it represents inheritances and it just represents transformation in general and like I said, death. So unfortunately, a big theme of Scorpio's lives tend to be death. They usually have key figures in their life and it doesn't have to be anybody in their family. It could be a friend, it could be even a pet, but there is always somebody in their life, a key figure in their life that passes and it changes their entire life and their entire perspective and completely changes the direction of their life. Um, it's not always like that. It's not always death necessarily. Um, so, like I said, it could also just be the death of your life as we know it, like moving. It also represents uncovering of secrets of the past to clear things out for the future. And it's just pretty much like representing the highest and the lowest of humankind in general. So right now we're currently going through this COVID-19 situation and I'm pretty sure people who have heavy Pluto influences are going through a lot right now because a lot is changing, a lot is ending, a lot is coming to fruition, a lot is being born and a lot of people aren't seeing the fruits of labor or seeing the changes benefit them in a positive way yet because we're still stuck inside but right now Pluto is probably having a huge influence on a lot of us. So now we're going to talk about Scorpio, my fellow water sign. I already did Cancer, Woot Woot, and now we're doing Scorpio, Woot Woot. And I don't even know where to begin. Um, Scorpio, let's focus on the goods, okay? <laughs> Before we dive into the bads and why they get such horrible reps. Um, like I said, they have two polarities in them because they're supposed to both destroy and create. And I guess for Scorpios, it becomes a struggle of trying to balance out the bad with the good, trying to find an equal balance between their destructive behavior and putting that destruction to good use. That's the whole point because um, on the positive end, for me personally, they're intense, but I think intensity is good. I love intense 
intensity because with intensity comes passion. They're very, very passionate and compassionate. They can be very vulnerable and emotional in a very good way, but only if they're evolved because the thing with Scorpios is that they tend to see um, emotions being shown in a vulnerable as in a vulnerable way as weakness which is why I feel like Pisces and Scorpios have almost a love-hate relationship um, it's a very strong connection but the thing is is that Pisces it's very easy for us to express ourselves emotionally and um, Scorpios because they're afraid of those emotions because they don't want to tap into that because they know how dark and deep it can get they tend to just write it off as a weakness even though deep down they know it's not a weakness and the, the truth of the matter is it's mostly um, a jealousy thing it's almost like they're jealous of other water signs like cancer and pisces for being able to just express those repressed emotions whereas it's it takes a lot for them to show that soft side to anyone even themselves they can be great leaders because they're extremely determined and a lot of them tend to be very successful um, magnetic they're an emotional force to be reckoned with like you don't sleep on Scorpios ever okay it just gets really old to constantly hear that they're evil or that they're this and they're that and I'm, I get tired of not hearing the good because it, that just lets me know that you haven't come across a Scorpio who has shown you good and that's probably because you never got close enough to them if you get close enough to them you'll understand that they always take care of the people that they love and like they're extremely passionate and caring and loving like their love is always gonna be there they could hate you and still love you because quite honestly it's one and the same and they would rather feel something than feel nothing at all they're also very persistent and consistent which to me can be very very good but i've seen the bad of that because you know if somebody doesn't want you to be persistent or consistent it becomes an obsession and that's also another characteristic of theirs they can be borderline obsessive over things and can create addictions because of that obsession and a lot of them tend to be obsessed with people because you know people that they love people that they end up in serious close relationships with um, people that they are involved with nine times out of ten if you're ever dealing with a scorpio they're always going to carry a part of you with them like you're never ever going to really escape them and kind of like in deep in their unconscious mind like you're always going to low-key belong to them in some way shape or form you like it's like you almost can always feel their energy if somebody that in your life um, that has a Scorpio placement seems to never be able to like leave your mind or your headspace or just randomly pops up certain days it's because of that Pluto influence because of that Scorpio influence it's that obsessive nature that obsessive behavior and because of it it's like the energies are formulating and attaching themselves to you if that makes any sense I know I'm probably sounding a little crazy right now but if you're an energy person like me and you're super spiritual like me I can feel everything I feel everybody's energy all the time even when I don't want to, especially when I'm out here in New York. There are so many people. So if you're an energy person like me, you'll know exactly what I'm saying when I mention how a Scorpio always kind of has a piece of you. And they can also be controlling. And I really wanted to dive into this controlling aspect because it can be used for good and for bad. That's one thing that you have to notice about Scorpios. That it can either go really, really good or go really, really bad. But you get, they have to have that good control. So um, I wrote this down. Um, the key is to control chaotic situations and being of use to others by fulfilling an unmet need. That's where they thrive, where they shine, is them using their force and helping situations, um, turning chaotic situations into greatness. And like I said, giving to people who, or situations that have been unmet in the needs department and i think i already mentioned that they're really intuitive i don't know if i mentioned that or not but they're extremely intuitive like uncomfortably so because they're very very observant as well so that combination is just too much for me <laughs> like you see like i'm a Pisces, like i always say in all these videos and i say it because it's important when i'm talking about the water signs because cancer and scorpio are also just as intuitive as pisces but we're all intuitive in very different ways um i don't want to say very different ways and sometimes, depending on what you're reading, they'll say that, oh, Pisces is the most intuitive. Oh, no, Cancer is the most intuitive. No, Scorpio is the most intuitive. But it's like, I think we're all equally intuitive. It's just on different spectrums of the dome or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I've been making up my own phrases, y'all. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But um, I just don't know how to, I feel like, 
I'll go into that more when we get into Neptune because that's my ruling planet. That's Pisces ruling planet and it's the planet of dreams and illusions. And I feel like that's where I want to focus most of my attention on intuition. But Scorpios are really intuitive and I feel like they're mostly intuitive when it comes to the darkness of other people. They know how to feel those lies and deceit. And on the bad side, um, which I really don't want to go into because I hate that these are like the main things that people think of when they think about Scorpio, but it's gotta be said because there are Scorpios out there, oh, future, who are giving y'all a really bad name. But it's also beautiful because with this video, you can see exactly what I mean when I say that it could go really, really good for Scorpio or really, really bad. And future is a perfect example of how it can go really really bad okay they can be controlling in a very bad way because it can mean that they are manipulative and are only trying to get things and have that control based off of greed that's the bad controlling part of Scorpio is always having an ulterior motive deep down when you're trying to invest in certain situations and people um, they can be dangerous um, Ike Turner they can be violent secretive manipulative like I already mentioned um, and possessive they can be very very possessive they also can be jealous or envious with however you wanna or whichever situation they are in will show where that jealousy or that envy lies and um, I think that's all that I want to say about Scorp oh wait no more on their bad side um, which people tend to talk about the most is their secretiveness um, they can be extremely extremely secretive because they're honestly afraid of people seeing who they actually are and I thought I was gonna go more into that now but I think I want to do that going into the sister sign segment of this so keep watching I'll explain to you what I mean about their secretive abilities Okay, so now we're going to talk about sister signs Scorpio and Taurus and this is going to be kind of difficult for me because aside from Pisces and Virgo sister sign energy and how they're so similar, like Scorpio and Taurus are right, right next to them when it comes to that. They're pretty much the same damn person if I'm going to be completely honest and I honestly never realized how similar they were until today to be completely honest but it's kind of scary. Because I've dated both a Taurus and a Scorpio and I'm it's it's funny it's almost like a Taurus is a Scorpio but with like a pretty ribbon on top of it to distract from everything else <laughs> but um let me just get right into this so one similarity that I know is between them um, is they're both possessive okay the way that Taurus is possessive it's more like a child in a preschool who has all these toys and doesn't really pay attention to them and then they see another child play with that toy and all of a sudden they're like no it's mine all of a sudden they want to pay attention to that toy that is how I think a Taurus is possessive and I think it's also extremely important to mention the reason why Tauruses are possessive a lot of them tend to have childhoods where there is a lack of stability um, a lack of a certain structure and because of that they were all a lot of things were always changing they were never having the stability that is innate for a Taurus to have they, they need stability they want stability they need to be grounded so a lot of them didn't really have that and because of that when they grow up they're very against changes they're very against people taking things that they feel belong to them they're against a lot of change period which is why they're so stubborn they're very against people being against their views and their ideologies because if it means that it's going to uproot them from what they already know, then it's going to be a problem. Um, <laughs> you just got to like tread carefully when it comes to them. Um, I don't even know how to explain it, but I've seen Tauruses. It, they don't tend to change their minds about things unless they've experienced something or they've seen somebody express something in a way that they liked. And then all of a sudden it became, oh yeah, I agree. Super weird. You'll meet a Taurus and you'll tell them for years and years that the sky is blue. But for some reason, the per person, like, years later is like, the sky is iridescent or, or, or some weird shit like that. And all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, the sky is blue. And you'll just be sitting there like, I told you it was blue, like, five years ago. <laughs> so that's how they're possessive and why they're possessive. And Scorpios, it's kind of the same thing because, like I said, Pluto is always uprooting them in a certain way. Whether that be a key figure in their life passing on, um... 
them moving in an extreme way, not like like domestic, but like I'm going from this country to this country or just something happens that shakes their foundation in that way, like an earthquake or like a volcano. Scorpios tend to be more possessive of people versus things. Taurus will be possessive of all things. <laughs> All things that have a capability of changing and making them feel like they're out of control in that way and they don't have stability, that's an issue. But for Scorpio, it's more so of a possession of people. Um, I'm sure some of them can be possessive of things, but I've mostly seen it with them being possessive with people. And I don't think it has to do more so with the change aspects, even though that's part of it. And I think it's just really more so about that deep, dark energy about that. What's mine is mine um, and the intensity that comes with that owning something possessing someone and making sure that that love stays because they don't trust people <laughs> extreme trust issues it is very hard for both tauruses and scorpios to let go of the past okay um they stay in the past because one it's familiar to them and two it's because of that obsession and that possession it's like it's it mostly especially if they were the ones who didn't end it if it was the other person that ended it then it, it's just skyrocketed to a thousand what they didn't pay attention to before now all of a sudden matters on a whole other scale um to the, like like i said just to the point of obsession they can't let go of situations and of people because they don't want change they like familiarity and they want to own people <laughs> if they're unevolved if they're unevolved let me make that disclaimer because i don't i don't need all that both are very secretive but it was hard for me to say that both of them are like that because I think secretiveness is more a Scorpio trait, but Tauruses are too. The problem is is that it's shown differently, so you can't even tell. But that's why I said that today I just realized how similar they are because as I'm thinking about past instances, I was like, you know what? Tauruses are sneaky um, and they are private just like Scorpios, just as private. Um, they're just really good at not making it look as such. Like, I don't know like if anybody else can tell, but I can always tell when Scorpios are just being secretive. It's almost like they want the world to know that they got secret. They want people to see them as mysterious. Whereas Taurus, it's like a more of a natural thing. They're just like, I'm just not gonna tell you anything. They're usually the ones in the crowd being really quiet when everybody else is talking about certain deep things. That's how I notice. Like, they won't jump in and talk about their issues. And even if you ask them questions, they'll answer, you know? A lot of times the Scorpio won't even answer or they'll go completely around the question. You're like, what does that have to do with what I just said? But Taurus, they'll still stay on the topic. They're just very good at maneuvering around that topic. They'll answer it, but they're never going to give you details but it's still an answer so if you're somebody like me who's not going to really pry because you know you know boundaries um you won't even notice <laughs> which is why all those years went by without me noticing and i also said because this can be a little touchy um and i don't want to go too deep into that but they also both have very strong potential for violence if they do not have control of their emotions and if they don't ever learn how to fully express their emotions like they're both fixed signs so change and things that are not familiar to them are extremely hard for them to cope with and deal with and because they're so secretive on top of that it's like they don't really have people to express that to or they're afraid to express it to those said people who actually care about them so because of that um it can get really bad for them if they are not evolved if they're like on the complete opposite spectrum of all that they can be the highest of the high of them if they're the lowest of the low of them it's not a good look if they don't ever learn how to deal with their emotions because they can be prone and lead themselves into violence, lead themselves into the volcano that they can become. And I guess the last thing that I said they tend to have in common is, I guess, a need for revenge. <laughs> I won't say a need. I don't know. I don't necessarily know if Tauruses have a need for revenge, but if the opportunity presents itself, it's rare that they're not going to take it. Whereas Scorpio, there's a fixation, okay? Um, and they got patience. That's the thing, too. They got patience for the revenge, and it will always be when you least expect it when it comes to a Scorpio. But Tauruses, at least from my own personal experience, I feel like they're a little messy about it. Like, like I said, they won't strive for it like a Scorpio will secretly strive for it, but they'll have an opportunity, and they'll take it, And it, but it will be like so... It will be so obvious, like something bad will happen, you'll make them feel a type of way, they'll feel attacked, and in like five minutes they'll find a way to like say something to you, make you feel like shit, or 
just be rude. I don't know. There are so many layers to that, but they're so messy about it. That's the difference. Scorpios have clean, good revenge. <laughs> Tauruses have awful revenge, at least from my personal experience. It's just that type of revenge where it's childish revenge. Like, really? You didn't even, like, put an effort into this. Like, if you're really going to do this revenge thing, I'm going to need you to take it up a notch because these Scorpios are really killing the game. <laughs> um, that's all I'm going to say. I could say so much more, but I really am doing my best with not making these videos too long. That is why, for those who are asking, I, I don't want to create a 30 minute video. I really want to make this as concise as possible because these are, supposed to, these are supposed to be beginner videos. So if I go too deep or if I say too much, it can be overwhelming. I'm even overwhelming myself and there's so much more to unpack. So. Um, just let me know if you guys have any other questions I think I should just like open up the floor because I don't really push enough when it comes to promoting my things but I'm all about discussions if you guys have questions and you want to know you can DM me for those of you who follow me on Instagram I know who you are that watch these videos or um, just comment below and ask me more questions about Pluto and um, where it lies in your chart because where it lies in your chart is where it's going to represent the biggest transformation, your biggest growth, um, where you're probably going to have to fight your most demons and your most obsessive behaviors. <sighs> all of that. <laughs> Find out where it is in your chart, which house it's in, all that jazz. And um, that's all. That's all that I have to say to you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope you come to my next video. I said come to my next video, like we're coming to an event. We kind of are at this point. So...